straight from the fall and there's trouble in your soul can't you hear the blessed savior calling you when your soul is lost in sin and you're at your journey's end and you hear the blessed savior calling you calling you calling you calling you calling you and you hear the blessed savior calling you for years my people have made a pilgrimage to this laxin and shrine Every summer, drawing thousands of my people seeking spiritual nourishment. It pains me to see my own people abandoning our native culture and religion, embracing other religions that have historically abused us and tried to beat the Indian out of us. When you see that image, it screams Indian religion. They have our ceremonial colors for direction. And yet, in their eyes, our Indian religion is pagan or it's not right. And for me, it's like a contradiction. For years, many of my people have accepted and accommodated mainstream religions. But this acceptance and accommodation has not always been returned. Calling you, calling you, calling you, calling you. It's something I never had to deal with until a year ago, when my family and I suffered a great loss. This is my father, Jack Oje. Dad was a working man, community leader, backyard mechanic, a jack of all trades. The spiritual base and teachings that govern my life are because of my father. No matter what I had been through, or had done, Dad was always there for me. On December the 15th, 2006, Dad left us, suddenly. of understanding and respect for our spiritual beliefs became all too clear for me and my family when my father died and we buried him here in the Anglican graveyard in Wabasca, Alberta. At that time I had wanted to conduct a ceremony to send my father on his way but the local priest forbid me to bring a drum and smudge onto church property claiming to do so was against Anglican church policy. So my father remained stuck here in limbo. I've come back home to resolve the situation and release dad to the spirit world. When I drive around Wawaska, I see evidence of a lot of dysfunction in this community. We have two generations that had their native culture and religion stolen. I think that's why some of our communities are so lost. When I come home and see all these little white crosses by the road, this sadness, this blackness comes over me. There's too much sickness here. 
But I understand the pain in my community because I too was lost until I discovered my native spirituality. You know how angry I was growing up, how mad I was, I was always getting into trouble because that was because of what I was going through here and seeing what was going on. I had to learn the teachings <clears throat> Because I knew I had so much hate in my heart, so much anger, that I had to learn to forgive these people who abused me. But I know if it wasn't for my, the spirituality, I'd either be dead right now, or I'd be 25 years behind bars. You understand more than I do about the Cree culture, because I don't, not where I was raised. Not my way. My way is the way I was raised. To be a Catholic. Because reason in, uh, in a residential school, they don't teach you nothing, really, just schooling. But they never wanted you to talk Cree or stuff like that. And I don't know what the outside world was about. Or the Indian culture. Or who I was. <laughs> this open field still haunts my community. This is where the St. Martin's Catholic Residential School was situated. This is where my mother was literally raised from age 2 to 14. Dad, on the other hand, was only at the Anglican Residential School for a couple of years before he ran away and was raised on the land with his parents. Dad never became a part of this lost generation. Native spirituality had always played an important role in his life. come to realize that these residential schools played a pivotal role in disconnecting and stripping my people from their language, culture, identity, and spirituality. This is what happened to mom. When dad passed on, she wanted a Christian burial for him at the Anglican church where they had been married. The rest of the family respected her wishes, which, as it turned out, put us into direct conflict with the local priest. This is a priest who denied me in honoring my father last year, a year ago, in honoring him the traditional way as I was taught. This is his house, but there's nobody here. I just wanted to sit down with him and ask him why. How could a man, a man of a cloth, deny my family in honoring our father? as we laid him to rest in our way. We live in the 21st century and we're still being punished for being Indians. That's not right. My sister Doreen and her brother-in-law Duke were with me last year when we tried to honor our father in a traditional way. I felt that my father wasn't given the respect. And to me that when they said that, I was angry, upset, hurt. 
Because I wanted everything for my dad that day. Okay, well, how do you, how do you feel today? It's been a year today out there. Well, my feelings haven't changed. I mean, I'm still angry, bitter. When I think about that day, it'll always stay there. It won't go away because it's already been done. We can't change it. So with only one funeral that you have, you might as well make it worthwhile. Because you ain't going to have that chance again to say, I should have done this, I should have done that. So like I say, if you believe in something, do it. Don't matter your disrespect, the laws they put in place, you're paying honor to an individual that you've loved for so many years. Through this community elder interview that was done with Dad, he's still guiding me and giving me direction. Last year, feelings of anger and hate welled up inside me. But now, listening to my father, I know I need to overcome that anger and hate and try to make an accommodation with the church so it could come to not fear our ways and hopefully learn to respect our ways. A year ago, I didn't want to play church politics. I was consoling my mother and my grieving family. But now, seeking answers, and with a local priest unresponsive to me, I've traveled to Peace River to talk directly to the Archbishop who oversees the diocese. I guess one of the reasons that I'm here a year ago in December, my dad passed on. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened during this whole time of my family was that I wanted to be able to honor my father on how I was taught based on what I was told about it being a church policy that I wasn't able to do that. I just wanted to let you know how it affected me and then how it affected my family. Well, I can appreciate that. Uh, the one. The one thing I want you to understand is that there's no church policy as such uh, that says no to um, smudging or drumming. Uh, there, is, there isn't one. These kind of unfortunate events, and I believe they are unfortunate, uh, shows perhaps a lack of sensitivity that needs to be sharpened and needs to be addressed. Uh, I apologize to you personally because you shouldn't be in that kind of position. However, I also want you to recognize that uh, the local congregation in this diocese, they make these kind of decisions. As the bishop, uh, I'm only the shepherd. I'm the leader that tries to guide. So what would I need to do to be able to I'll tell you what, I, what I can do is, um, since you've made me aware of this situation, I can, I can facilitate this by going in and meeting with the people myself. Okay? Yeah, but the decision will be theirs. Please understand that. But I guess if you were able to open the doors for us to sit down yes. with that yes. local priest yes. and the congregation, that yes, we can do that. would do a lot as well. Yeah. We're all on a journey my friend. Maybe we've just begun a journey together. Yes. Okay? God bless you. Thank you. And we'll find a way out of this, yes. okay? Great. Appreciate that. Okay. Good. Thank you. God bless. He basically told me that he is willing to come down here and um, he will see what he can <clears throat> do, but ultimately it's up to the church, the priest and the, and the congregation to make that decision. It's nothing to them. It don't mean nothing to them. They don't know where we're at with this. It's in here. It's not here. But that's the thing, though. I was talking about my told mom a little bit about what happened in Peace River. She just said, you know what? Just go ahead and do it. Just go ahead and take the drum and the smudge and send him home because he's stuck here. Mm -hmm. Well, you got the blessings, and just go ahead and do it. Now, it's up to you guys if you guys want to wait for the Archbishop or just 
Go ahead and do it. Wait for what? What could they do if we do it? Obviously, the, the, the religion doesn't respect our religion, and that's kind of what I'm trying to come to terms with, and that so, and still trying to remain respectful for their their religion as well. So, I'd defy all of them and just go ahead and do it. I'd give them a time frame. Okay, you got two weeks, three weeks to come down and straighten this out. Then go ahead and do it. I want to be able to do this right, where it's going to leap uh, and give Dad the, the peace that he needs as well. And because uh, I know that's why he's still stuck here as well. He he knows there's unfinished business here, huh? and that uh, and he was never a man to leave unfinished. unfinished, and that so. In contrast to the situation with the Anglican Church, the local Catholic Church and Father Less have made an effort to respect native customs and traditions, allowing the drum and smudge in their services. John Paul II very often underlined that the culture is very important and Christ wants to be part of that culture, wants to, wants to be part of the life of the local, local people. So that's why this culture, the spirituality of the local people is so important, not to destroy it, but simply to, to embrace and to help to, to grow. It's, 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 it's hard to answer for everybody, mm -hmm. but I know that uh, for us it is, it is very important, you know, when people say goodbye to their loved ones and in their own traditional way and make peace, you know, with, with them and, and let them go mm -hmm. to that world. And it, to me, it, it, it should be, you know, in the local, local way, you know, local spiritual way and cultural way. Contrary to the Archbishop's offer to intervene personally, he subsequently sent a letter to the local priest, instructing him to take the matter up with his congregation. I wanted to respect the process the Archbishop set out, but it's now been a month, and after making phone calls, sending emails and faxes, to ask when this consultation would take place and a decision made, there's been no response. So after discussing with the family, we decided collectively that we are going to go ahead and send dad home today. Along with mom, Duke and Doreen, my other sister Lolly, and our grandmother Caroline, my cousin Lester has come to perform the spirit death song ceremony. 